So we have another world's first from Neve here. This is the 1073 SPXD. Now it's a 1073 channel strip with a digital audio interface as well. Exactly. This is a 1073 channel strip that has a complete audio interface uh, combined in one single unit. So this really is a one-stop shop for many studios. Uh, we have nine total inputs and 12 total outputs via USB or ADAP modes. So let's talk about the channel strip side first of all. What makes a genuine 1073? So just like the rest of our range, including the 1073 Classics and our 1073 SPX, the SPXD is manufactured here in our UK-based factory, and it's designed by the same team who work on our large format console range. Um, so there really is a lot of engineering capability and uh, design expertise that's gone into the making of this unit. Now on the front end side, this is a true 1073 circuit that has the three stages of gain. So you have the line gain and then you have the two stage microphone gain on the front end. Uh, so this is capable of giving you up to 80 dB of mic gain uh, for any of your recordings going into the ADC. So it's not just a 1272 repackaged like some other products on the market that we might see. Yeah, exactly. This is a true 1073 circuit that has our exclusive Mariner specification transformers on the line inputs, the microphone input and the DI, and also on the output stage before that signal goes to the ADC. And of course, we've used premium components throughout, just like we do with any of our products, both on the analog and the digital side of this unit. So let's discuss the digital audio interface side of this now. With the 1073 SPXD, we've opted to include a complete digital audio interface. So it isn't just a digital option that gives you IO on just the channel strip side. It has full monitoring capability, uh, expansion options via multiple modes. So it really is a single unit that can do everything you need in any studio environment. So I've actually got one of these in my studio as well. Now, as a master engineer, I typically don't do a lot of audio recording. I do now and again, I use the 1073 channel strip for that. But I use the digital audio interface specifically in my role as a critical listener. And since integrating this into my studio, I found myself using this a lot more compared to other DACs that I've got access to, purely because it really does offer me that extra little something when I'm listening to music. I'm glad that you mentioned the DAC quality on this because everyone knows Neve for the analog audio quality, but our digital conversion technology is also top notch. And many engineers out there who use it have often turned to it to be their main systems in their studio, either on the analog to digital conversion side or on the digital to analog conversion side. So that really is one of the key features is that the digital side of this unit really complements the premium analog circuitry. So, a few potential users of this are artists and producers, anyone who's looking for premium 1073 sound and digital conversion in one unit. This could be installed into any singer-songwriter studio to give them a one-stop shop type unit that just plugs into a computer without having to worry about interfacing different bits of gear together. Uh, this really is a simple plug and play type device for people like that. And also we know of other producers and engineers who have had these units in their studio and they've been using other high-end premium DACs already. Since having this installed in their studio, they've completely gotten rid of the other DAC now. They just lean on this solely because it is an all-in-one unit now. Yeah, and also portability is a factor in this because the SPXD, while maybe not as portable as something like the 88M, it offers a complete channel strip of 1073 with all of the functionality that you do get with the 88M and more on the digital interface side. So there's a current trend, particularly in the UK, of producers and, and tracking engineers going out with bands to unique spaces rather than renting out big studios. And this could be the ideal solution for that purpose. You take this on the road with you with a, a laptop, maybe you expand it with the OPX, so you've got more preamps uh, to do a drum tracking session, for example, and then a complete 1073 channel strip for doing things like vocals and guitars, anything you really want that extra layer of analog uh, tracking capability with. This is the ideal type of setup for that type of work. So ideal for the likes of singer-songwriters, rappers, 
people who just want to do vocal sessions or instrument sessions, things like that, composers, but also as well, moving away from the, the musical side of the audio world, we've got streamers, for example. This will fit perfectly into a, a streamer's workflow. You plug a SM7B in the front of this, you've got the headphone amp to monitor your, your signal with, and it's an all-in-one unit for that. Yeah, exactly. There's multiple potential uses for this. We, we've even seen some of our uh, beta testers who took this on the road uh, to form part of their live sound setup. So vocalist in a band has this side of stage, plugs his microphone into it and uses the headphone out to feed his in-ear monitors with a cue feed coming from the front of house desk and uh, can then send the 1073 output signal back up to that front of house desk. So you've got really high quality uh, vocal channel going into your live sound setup and all of the monitoring capability of this unit as well. So in terms of workflow possibilities, we're covering everything here. We've got monitoring, we've got your headphone amp, you've got your audio interface, you've got your mic pre at the front, you've got your line and your DI, things like that. It kind of does everything. <laughs> it does, yeah. You can do tracking sessions, overdubbing sessions, mixing sessions with the SPXD. You can even just jam through it. You don't have to have this plugged into your computer to get access to the monitoring capability. You could just plug your headphones in, plug a guitar in and jam away. So let's go through the analog features then. Well, with the SPXD, this is basically the same as the SPX. So analog channel strip wise, the features are, are virtually identical. You have the front and rear connections so that you can integrate this very easily into a studio via patch bays or direct cabling at the back. And then you can quickly plug into the front of the unit here if you need to just quickly record something. So a microphone, line, or DI right in the front. So I've noticed the DI has moved. With the SPXD, we've used the combi input at the front, which can now accept the DI input. And we've actually modified the DI circuitry which now runs through the 1073 Mariner transformer on the microphone stage. So you're getting a very high quality DI circuit here. You can just plug your instrument into the front, use the uh, gain pot here to adjust your gain in the microphone side, and you're getting that transformer balance front end. We've also adjusted the impedances as well to better match them to modern instruments. And you can actually use the pad button to adjust the impedance from two mega ohms down to 200 kilo ohms. So if you really want to tune that front end, depending on what instrument you're plugging in, you've got multiple options there. So the SPX side of things, it's, it's the same as the, the standard model. You've got your mic pre, you've got your inductor-based EQ, and your high-pass filter on the end. Yeah, exactly. Everything that you're familiar with is here. Uh, you've even got the insert circuit that was the same on the SPX that you can change the insert point. So if you want to do some tracking uh, with analog inserts, say you wanted to add a compressor, you can do that now going into the ADC of the unit. Um, so you can very easily have uh, preamp, EQ, compressor and different points of the signal and then record straight out via USB into your computer. And I've noticed on the back as well, the PSU side of things has changed. Yeah, so we've listened to user feedback and we've took the opportunity to uh, redesign the PSU. We've got a locking XLR type connector, uh, 16 volt rails and 48 volt uh, rails, which basically just improve efficiency. Um, sound wise, doesn't affect the sound quality between the SPX or the SPXD, but it does improve the, the uh, heat efficiency of the PSU and it provides a more solid connection when you're clicking it in at the back. And then obviously the new section, which is the monitoring section at the front. So this monitoring section is completely new. Um, so just like the SPX, you have the output level here, which is your main analog output level. And the analog output is still there. Um, so you've got the USB, ADAT outputs, and you've got the analog side. So this functions exactly the same as the SPX. But then to the right of that, we have these new monitor controls that are primarily used to interact between the SPX signal and the DAW signal. But they also have a, a lot of great features in the analog domain as well. Um, so we have the main output level, which controls our stereo pair of XLRs at the back. And this can connect directly to either active loudspeakers or into your um, speaker amplifier. And then you have a full range level control here. And you'll notice that we have a center detent here, just like the 88M, which is 10 dB below the maximum output level of 20 dBU. And then we go all the way down to minus infinity. So you've got a full range monitor controller here. 
and you can calibrate your speakers to an ideal listening level at that detent. Uh, you can also cut these speakers as well very quickly by pushing this pot. Um, and this level also controls your headphone output. So we've got a very high quality headphone amp here that allows you to just plug in your headphones uh, straight to the front of the unit and listen to what's, what's going on either in your DAW or directly from uh, the preamp. And the cut doesn't affect the headphones. So if you want to quickly cut your, your loudspeakers, you can push that in, but you still have the headphones functioning. So you, you can use this control for both functions very easily. So that's really handy then for just quickly chucking your headphones on. You can cut your monitor signals, check your mix, take them off, put it back on again. Really, really simple. And we've also got different monitor options as well. Yeah, so the monitor source can be fed from different locations. So here we're on Mon, which is our analog monitor input. So we have a pair of XLRs at the back that's our an analog source. So that could come from an external interface, a secondary system, something that you want an attenuator on, essentially. Um, so that can be plugged in there. A uh, long press will take you through the options. We then have SPX as the source. So if I wanted to just listen to what's coming in on the channel strip side, say for example, uh, I'm auditioning something, or maybe I'm just jamming with the unit, I've plugged in my bass guitar or maybe a vocal, I wanna listen to that through the headphones. That's what you set SPX to uh, for there. Uh, if I then press this again, it will toggle through to DAW. And DAW is basically listening to the stereo source of either the USB or the ADAT inputs. So that's the digital return coming into this monitor path through that high quality DAC that we mentioned earlier. A third press takes us to both options lit. Now you'll see there we have SPX and DAW lit. So what we're doing there is we're blending the two together. We have the mono source of the SPX that's coming straight down the middle through both headphones or through both loudspeakers. Uh, but the stereo source remains in stereo uh, coming back from the DAW either via USB or ADAT. And when those are engaged, you'll see underneath it says blend. So that means now that the, the blend pot is engaged here in the middle. So when you've engaged blend, that's like your latency-free monitor mode, if you like. That's correct. So when blend is engaged, this is ideal for doing overdubs because this part is now engaged into the circuit and I can use it to blend between either the direct signal of the SPX or the stereo signal of the DAW. And it's also a detented pot. So in the middle, both signals are attenuated by around 6 dB. And then I, if I want some more SPX, so more of my vocal, more of my guitar, for example, I would turn it towards SPX over here, which then turns the DAW signal down, or vice versa. I can turn it more towards the DAW. So I have more of my uh, feed coming back from my uh, Pro Tools session. So we talked about the digital side of it. Let's go into the USB side of it. How would I set this up to record or overdub, for example? When this is connected directly to your Mac, as we said, this pops up as a core audio device. Um, so you can set that as your playback engine. And once it's configured, you'll see in the I.O. tab of your DAW, we're using Pro Tools here, you can see the inputs and outputs. So you see on the input side, we have the analog inputs of the device and then eight ADAT inputs. So if you wanted to expand this, then you can add eight additional tracks um, via ADAT. For example, if I want to add an OPX, if I want to do some multi-track recording, I can feed the OPX from the 1073 SPXD and they will act as my eight additional inputs. Yeah, exactly. Those two units combined give you the total of nine inputs uh, via USB into your system. And you'll see on the output tab here, we have a similar setup. However, with the SPXD, we have two stereo monitor outputs. So you have outputs one and two and three and four that can be selected from long pressing the, the blend pot here. So if I'm working with a, a vocalist, for example, and I want to give them a unique send, a Q send, I can set it up on the auxiliary three and four from the SPXD. Yeah, exactly. And you don't have to disrupt your main monitor setup for that. You can create that in Pro Tools or whichever DAW you're working with and configure it quickly on the blend pot here by toggling between one and two and three and four. And you'll notice we also have ADAT as well. So we have eight additional ADAT outputs. So if you wanted to get more outputs from this device into something else for monitoring purposes, for example, you can achieve that via this uh, IO tab here.
So we can have more queue sends and more monitoring options. Yeah, exactly. Once you have your I.O. configured, you can go to your channel that you want to do a either a tracking session or an overdubbing session with. I can set the input to Neve input one and then set the monitor path to uh, one of the stereo monitor outputs, most likely one and two. And then I can set this track ready to record. So before I do that, I'm going to connect the microphone up to the front of the unit. So we have a dynamic mic here, so it doesn't need phantom power. I can adjust the input type from front or back by pressing the front button here. And now we have the microphone signal coming into the unit. I can adjust the gain here. Um, and if I want to, I can also add EQ. So I can add some 1073 inductor EQ to that signal. So I'm tracking with that 1073 processing applied. And then we have the output level control here, which basically acts like a channel fader, same as the original SPX. So this is my main output level and it runs in parallel between the analog output and the digital output. So if you want to split that recording into two separate systems, you can use the analog out into one and then the USB out into, into your computer, basically. And we've got the insert loop at the back as well. So I can insert a 2254 compressor, for example, into the chain. Yeah, exactly. Just like the SPX, the SPX-D has that balanced insert, send and return circuit. So you can apply a compressor such as the 2254. You could have that in your chain and you can engage it via the INS switch here. I can then press the pre button to toggle if that insert goes before or after the EQ. So you can customize your channel strip options uh, with the EQ, the preamp, the output, and the insert switches here that allow you a lot of flexibility when you're doing either a tracking or overdubbing session with the SPXD. So once I've got my vocal chain, for example, set up, all I need to do is arm the channel and Pro Tools and hit record. Yep, exactly. You just arm the channel, and then you've got your signal coming in to your track uh, and Pro Tools ready to record. So I can then set this to record, and I can decide what output I want that channel to go to. Uh, and all the rest of the tracks in the session can also go to the, the same output so that then I'm doing a full overdub with everything in my DAW passing through the monitor path of the SPXD. If I wanted to monitor my recorded signal latency free, what I would do is I would perhaps mute the signal here or set it to a different output. And then I engage the blend pot when I'm in blend mode to be able to listen to more of my vocal or less of my vocal and more of the DAW. And you've got a lot of flexible options here for getting a really good uh, headphone monitoring signal for when you're doing overdubs. So if we're gonna use this in a mix and setup, how would I use the SPXD as an insert in Pro Tools? Yeah, so this is one of the uh, really unique features about this unit is it's not just a supreme tracking device with all the digital connectivity that we've mentioned. You can use this for mixing and apply the SPX signals uh, the analog signals digitally into your DAW via the uh, two digital options. So what you do is, let's say we, we want to process this bass track here. So I'm just going to duplicate this track um, so that we have a return track coming back from the SPX. I'm going to set this track's input as uh, Neve input one and set the output of this first track as Neve out three. You notice here, this is the digi input of the unit. So we always preserve the stereo monitor path for, through one and two. So you can still monitor through the unit while you're doing this. That's why you were using digi input three. So when that's set, I then set this track to record um, and I set it to input monitor and I'm gonna mute it as well. Um, so we're just using this to process currently. And then I set record in Pro Tools. And you'll notice on the front of the unit, we have the digi button. So this digi button allows me to uh, engage the digital input from Pro Tools or the DAW back into the unit. And this digi input goes through the line input. So it's using the line preamplifier. So if I toggle this through to line mode, I then have the transformer balance line input, uh, which is coming from this digital source. So now we have the unit set up, I can set record in my DAW and then press play. And we're now looping through from the first track through the analog circuitry of the unit and then back into the DAW. So as I mentioned, the digi input goes through the line preamp, which is transformer balanced. I can apply more, more or less gain from the switch here. I can also engage the EQ. So I'm activating those 
those inductors into the signal path and I can adjust the EQ. I can also engage my inserts as well. So I, if I have a compressor or anything attached, I can apply that to the signal chain uh, and use it as a, a hardware insert basically going into my DAW very easily. So how will I monitor this then if I'm recording? So as we mentioned, you can monitor either from the dry signal or from the, uh, the wet signal that's just been processed. And you can do that in, in Pro Tools by setting your outputs uh, from each device. And so as we mentioned before, the Digi input uses input three. So monitor one and two on the device is preserved. So any output, either from the wet or the dry track, can be sent to output one and two, which is then coming into my DAW uh, signal here. So we mentioned expanding the SPXD. We brought in a 1073 OPX now. Now this looks like a really powerful setup. Can we just go through how this would all work? Yeah, so as we mentioned before about like a portable recording rig, this could be the ideal rack mount unit accompanying a laptop on any location recording. You have one uh, in-depth channel, let's say, that has a 1073, it has EQ, it has insert capability. And then you have eight additional 1073s for just connecting directly to your mics. So this could be that, that ideal portable rig. Now, in this setup here, you'll see in the I.O., let's uh, so we go to the, the mix window and just have a look at what we have. What I can do is I can decide which of my tracks I want to send to either the monitor output of the SPXD or to the monitor output of the OPX. So we now have two separate monitor feeds. So I could set up two Q mixes then for two separate performers. How will we go about doing that? So in this Pro Tools session here, uh, let's say we have two performers and I want to give them each a unique uh, Q mix. So I'm going to use the Pro Tools sends for this. I'm going to click on send one and set it to the SPX output, which is Neve output one. And then I can configure uh, these outputs and balance them via the faders here. So this is unique mix one. And then on the second send, I can create an output that goes out of ADAP one and two into the OPX digital monitor path. So this is my second Q send. Um, so now I'm using these two controls on both devices. I have my main output level that would either go to the headphones or a speaker set. And the second output level, which is on the OPX that can go to the second set of phones or a second speaker set for doing uh, two sets of headphone monitoring. So if I'm in a recording situation, I'm tracking uh, a bass player and a drum at the same time, we need them both locking in together. We can have the bass player on the SPXD, the drum on the OPX. How would I go about setting up the, the channels in that instance? Just like you set up the, the monitor outputs on the sends, it's really straightforward to set the, the inputs in the DAW. You just decide which input you want for the bass. And as you mentioned, you probably want the, the SPX for that. So you can add some EQ, maybe an outboard compressor. That's Neve input one. And then the rest of the tracks, I just set as ADATs one through eight. So kick drum, snare drum, toms, and so on. All the drum kit would go through the, the OPX. So we've got a second SPXD now in this setup. How do we integrate these two units? So we've mentioned that the unit has both ADAT and USB options. And we've primarily focused on the SPXD being your USB interface that you can then expand into and out of via ADAT. Now, it also has a second mode, which is like an ADAT standalone mode. So if you had a third party audio interface, you can connect your SPXD up to it uh, via ADAT. And by combining these two modes like we have here, we can actually connect two SPXDs together. So the first unit at the bottom is my main audio interface connected via USB. And you can see the USB LED here. And then the second device is connected via ADAT into the first. So I now have two channel strips together and two stereo monitor paths that I can use simultaneously. So now we've got the capabilities to do dual mono record and we can do stereo recording as well. Uh, how do we sync these together then? They are connected via ADAT, so they can synchronize via ADAT. Um, and you can select the sample rates here on the front of the device. So the second device can be toggled through the different sample rates via the SR switch. You can also use the sync button to toggle between internal or external clock. So you can decide which of the units is your primary clock and which is the secondary clock. 
via these switches here. So just to summarize this setup then, we have two mono channel strips. We can use the digital inputs in Pro Tools to use it as a stereo unit, and we can use the inserts from the unit in stereo, so we can run uh, 33609, for example. So if I'm tracking, I can run it all through a stereo compressor. Yeah, exactly. By having two together connected in this way, you've got stereo capability for tracking, overdubbing, or mixing, as stated. And you also have up to four stereo monitor sources that you can listen to through the two uh, headphone outputs or the speaker outputs at the back. So another unique setup then, we've got the 88M as our main audio interface. And now we're connecting the SPXD to the interface via ADAT. Exactly, yeah. So the 88M is the primary interface that's connected to here via USB. And we've now got a full 1073 channel strip that I can inject into this via a single ADAT connection. Uh, so if I want to track, I can just put connect an ADAT output from the SPX into the 88M's ADAT input. And this gives me this 1073 channel strip appearing in my DAW on ADAT1. And then you can also connect the ADAT output from the 88M into the SPXD, uh, giving me an additional stereo monitor output as well. Um, so it doesn't have to be the 88M, could be an Apollo, could be any audio interface that has ADAT connections. You can now add a 1073 channel strip into your setup via ADAT with the SPXD. So just to summarize then, this really is a perfect solution for anyone who wants to integrate a genuine 1073 sound into their workflow. It really is a classic design for the modern era.